Hello all and welcome to Doc Play's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at metal reactivity, metal ores, oxidation and reduction. So, by the end of the session today you should be able to do the following things. You should be able to describe where ores are found and what they are. Explain oxidation and reduction in terms of oxygen. Identify molecules that are oxidized or reduced. And give a reason for different types of metal extraction. Let's first of all look at ores then, and, and what they are. We're talking about metal ores here, so we're talking about things that combine with metals and then are found in the ground, essentially. We can look at two types of metals here. We've got unreactive metals, which are a bit like this compound here, where we've got gold, and gold, which we've got this atomic, or the element symbol AU, is unreactive. It tends not to combine with oxygen very easily and therefore it sits around uh, for very many years. And unreactive metals like gold can be found in their pure form in, in the earth, just as gold seam, not like gold bars, quite like that. The other end of the spectrum we've got reactive metals and here we've got an example where we've got magnesium. And magnesium and other react, uh, reactive metals tend to combine with things like oxygen and also with sulfur and we tend to find we get metal oxides or metal sulfides which occur naturally and both of these examples unreactive and reactive metals form in the earth's crust ultimately so they're found in the earth's In particular, today we're going to look at this thing, the metal ore, and we can describe an ore as something which is a substance that contains enough metal to make it worthwhile extracting. So we've got two examples here. Here I've got iron, or Fe, often hematite, and that lump of black, grey looking rock there has got enough iron, combined often with oxygen there, to make it worth extracting the iron from that rock. And this beautiful green example on the right hand side here contains copper, and again we describe that as a copper ore because it's got enough copper within that substance in the form of copper oxide to make it worth extracting the copper from that piece of rock. So we, as we've just seen, metals, or reactive metals at least, tend to exist as oxides or sulfides in the ground and then they're often in a mixture of, of other compounds within some sort of rock and then if there's enough of that metal we describe that uh, rock as an ore. So in the process of extracting and separating metals from their oxide the first thing is normally some sort of refinery process in which we extract as much of the, the metal oxide as possible and then once we get the metal oxide we've got to find a way here of extracting the metal so in our top example, we have the copper, the Cu, and we want to get pure metal on its own on the right-hand side. Here we have copper chemically bonded to oxygen on the left-hand side. In our second example down here, we have two irons and three oxygens, and they are all chemically bonded together here in this iron oxide. And on the right-hand side, we want to extract the iron so it's on its own. So here on the right-hand side, we have iron metal. And how do we do that? Well, ultimately, there are two ways. And the common way that we'll see is we use a more reactive element. So in both of these examples, carbon is more reactive than either of the copper or the iron. And therefore, it's able to displace or remove the oxygen from the metal oxide. Let's look at our example number one here. Here we have something called copper 
oxide plus carbon and on the right hand side you're going to make copper which is a metal and carbon dioxide If we look at this reaction, we can see the oxygen is removed from the copper oxide and ends up on the carbon. So there's two things that we can learn here, or two words that we're going to describe. Oxidation happens when, in a reaction when an element or compound gains oxygen. So if we look at example one, the carbon on the left hand side, put that with the star, is oxidized to CO2. The carbon is oxidized because it gains oxygen. Reduction, on the other hand, is an element or compound that loses oxygen. Both of these are important definitions, as we'll see. So the, if we look at our reaction up here, the copper oxide on the left loses the oxygen as we go to the right. So we can say the copper is reduced. The carbon, because it removes the oxygen and it is oxidized, we say is the reducing agent. It reduces the copper oxide. So the reducing agent gets oxidized. So let's look at that again with our example below here. So number two, carbon monoxide plus the Fe2O3, iron oxide goes to make carbon dioxide and iron. Which one is oxidized? That's right, carbon monoxide is oxidized. And the iron, that is the Fe, is reduced. Or well, the iron oxide actually is what is reduced here. And this is the metal. The reducing agent here is carbon monoxide because that's the thing that is oxidized itself. Finally then, we're going to have a look at methods of extracting metals. And in the previous one, we used carbon. And carbon was used because the carbon was more reactive than either the iron or the copper. Over on the right-hand side, we've got a little table here of reactivity series. And at the top, we've got the more reactive elements. And we'll look at more examples in later lessons. And at the bottom, we've got the less reactive. We'll see here, carbon lies in the middle. You might be able to identify then that carbon should be able to react and extract metals from the following. So we should be able to get zinc oxide, should react. Iron oxide should react with carbon. And tin oxide from our table. And these should all react with carbon. Or be able to be extracted by that displacement reaction that we saw with carbon. 
What do we do therefore with the metals at the top here? That is aluminium, magnesium, calcium, sodium and potassium. We can't use carbon because it's not reactive enough. And these, we'll see in future lessons, can be extracted using a process known as electrolysis. We won't talk too much about electrolysis here. We'll save that for another lesson. Just to quickly recap then, you should now be able to identify and describe where ores are found and what they are. You should be able to explain oxidation and reduction in terms of oxygen, identify molecules that are oxidized or reduced, and give a reason for different types of metal extraction. I'll see you next time.